There's a lot of crazy things happening in the world right now. Inflation is probably gonna get much worse and stick around for a while. And in times like these, you have to get creative. Looking beyond your own country is one way to do this. Hey everyone, it's your girl Rose. Welcome back to my channel. Literally just the other day, I realized that I have been living as a nomad for almost a full year now. I've stayed in at least 10 Airbnbs, lived in a camper van, and my dog Jupiter and I have been on at least 20 flights in just the past year. I am telling you, I am so ready to settle down somewhere and I have decided on Mexico City. In fact, I like the city so much that I'm trying to buy a place here. And I actually found a place that I really like. And as of today, as I'm recording this video, I'm in the middle of taking care of all the paperwork and legal. Now, buying property in Mexico as a foreigner is a very particular process with a lot of terms and legal details specific to Mexico and obviously in Spanish. And so in this video, I wanted to make it easier for you and break down the step-by-step -step process for how to safely and legitimately buy property in Mexico, specifically as a foreigner. I'll also talk about financing options if you need to borrow money for the purchase, because there are ways to do that. And finally, I'll give an overview of real estate prices in Mexico City, so you can see what would be possible for you given your budget. I also have timestamps below this video if you want to skip ahead to specific parts. All right, so I know that buying property abroad is something that more and more people are looking into these days, especially with home prices getting so high in the States. As of 2022, the median home price in the States is $428,000, which is a 32% increase in the last two years alone. At the same time, wages haven't kept up. It's not that I couldn't afford to buy a place in the States, I totally could, but to get a nice place in a city that I actually wanna live in, I'd probably have to take out a 30 year mortgage for at least half a million dollars. And honestly, having spent all my 20s climbing my way out of $100,000 of student loan debt, I really didn't wanna do that. Unless of course it's debt on an investment property that pays for itself, but that is a conversation for another video. And so unless I could pay for a place in cash and own it outright with no debt, personally, I preferred to rent or live in a camper van. But in Mexico City, I found that I could afford a decently sized, amazing apartment in a prime walkable location without signing away the next 30 years of my life to a mortgage. I'm excited to share with you what I've learned. So without further ado, let's get into it. So step one for buying property in Mexico as a foreigner is to first find a place you like. Now there are two ways to find a place. The first is to go through a broker, just like in any other country, and you tell them what you're looking for and just have them send you options. They'll send you links to listings that fit your criteria. And if you like what you see, they will schedule viewings for you. The other way is to walk around in the neighborhoods that you like and just take pictures of signs that say se vende, which means for sale in Spanish. And the phone numbers will be noted on there and you would just text them on WhatsApp to schedule a viewing. So in Mexico, everything gets done via WhatsApp literally everything every business has a whatsapp account and if you want to make appointments or inquire about stuff you just text them on whatsapp it's a pretty interesting and definitely big difference between mexico and the states i actually did both methods i got super systematic walking the exact neighborhoods that i liked even getting down to the streets that i liked and noting down numbers and addresses of buildings that looked nice on a spreadsheet and then following up with them later. But in the end, I actually ended up finding a place that I really, really like through my broker. So let's talk about brokers. How do you find a good one? Like anywhere else in the world, there are really shitty brokers and very competent brokers. So when I first started looking, I didn't know anyone. So I literally just met a girl while out partying one night and started looking at properties with her because she said she owned a brokerage. Turns out she wasn't that competent because I actually ended up losing out on an apartment that I fell in love with but didn't get in the end because she was fucking stupid, quite frankly. Um, very frustrating experiences. I've also had brokers who didn't even show up to showings that they scheduled with me. So a lot of, you just get a lot of different types of professionals in real estate. I've also had experiences where brokers didn't even show up to showings that they scheduled with me or they don't call me back when they say they're going to and whatever the whole range of experiences. So that was obviously not okay. Anyway, long story short, after a lot of ups and downs, I ended up meeting a great broker through an organization that I joined called EO. 
EO is a strong network of entrepreneurs. It's worldwide. And because it's application only, you can assume that everyone in that organization is competent and trustworthy. So I found my broker through there. Turns out she's the best of the best with decades of experience. And within a week of working with her, I found a really, really awesome place. So the moral of the story is you have to find a good broker through a referral that you trust, especially in Mexico, just working with people that you trust is so important. I will actually leave my broker's contact info for you below. Um, her name is Alejandra. She's amazing. I don't get any kickbacks or anything. It's just for you to have someone to talk to as a starting point if buying in Mexico is something you're interested in. At the very least, she'll be able to orient you and give you a lot of good information. Now, I'm also part of a Facebook group for expats in Mexico. It has over 18,000 members, and if you're an expat in Mexico, chances are you're gonna join this group. So you can also ask around for referrals in there. It's a really great resource to find sort of vetted professionals for whatever you're looking for. I'll leave the link to that as well in the description of this video. Okay, so that is step one, finding a place you like. So once you've done that, you move right along to step two, which is to negotiate a price. Obviously, it helps to have a competent broker who understands the kind of leverage that you have and therefore can negotiate aggressively on your behalf. So once you agree on a price, some sellers are going to ask for a small good faith deposit. This deposit can be like $500 to $1,500. It's relatively small and it's 100% refundable and it's very informal, usually done on a handshake or some sort of casual written agreement. And it's just a small token to show that you're serious enough for the seller to take the property off the market. It's totally optional and not all sellers require it, but it's a pretty common step and it's actually pretty common in the US as well. All right, so step three, once you've reached an agreement with the seller on a price, it's time to find a notario, which is notary in, in Spanish. And this notario is gonna start the paperwork. So a notario is basically a real estate lawyer and a title company all sort of rolled up into one. And they're responsible for drafting up the, the purchase contract, for documenting you as the official new owner of the property, you know, putting your name on the deed and doing the research on the property and all of the previous owners to make sure that it's legitimate and free and clear of liens and other claims on the property. Once again, I'll leave the contact info below for the notario that I'm using. They have a ton of experience and come strongly recommended by my broker, but you can also ask around in that Facebook group I mentioned, and I encourage you to do your own research as well. So once you find a good notario, they're gonna start the following pieces of paperwork. The first piece is basically permission to buy real estate as a foreigner. In Spanish, it's the permiso para adquisición de inmuebles. And this is just a very quick application that you make to the Secretary of Exterior Relations. And you just ask for permission to buy property as a foreigner. It's very straightforward and your notario will take care of it for you. The second piece of paperwork that they work on is the libertad de gravamen. This is sort of a an official declaration that the property is free and clear to be purchased by you, that there aren't any unpaid taxes or unpaid water bills and mortgages that nobody knows about, liens and other claims on the property. This part is super important because the last thing you want is to buy a property and later on find out that someone else actually thinks they own it and wants to take you to court. And then the next piece is something called the avaluo, which means appraisal in Spanish. So an appraiser needs to assess the property's value so that the government knows how much to tax you because it's gonna be a percentage of the, the property's assessed value. Your notario will order this appraisal and submit it to the treasury for approval. And this part can actually take a couple of weeks. And finally, the notario is gonna start drafting up the contrato de compraventa, which is the contract for purchase. And this will lay out the terms of the purchase, basically. If you've ever purchased property in the States before, the notario basically does what a title company and real estate lawyer does for you. They are a one-stop shop for all the legal things that you need to do for the purchase. And they are definitely the most important person that you'll work with during this entire transaction. And obviously you're gonna have to pay up for their services. The notario usually charges around 3% of the purchase price, which you pay at closing. Something I forgot to mention is they'll also ask for a couple hundred dollars in advance as a retainer for them to start all the paperwork. Since you're gonna have to make all these various payments and deposits, it's best to check with your bank and get set up with 
international wire transfers. That's the easiest way to make these payments. Um, it's definitely really hard to withdraw a bunch of cash from ATMs here as the fees are outrageous and they usually only give denominations of 100 peso bills, which is the equivalent of $5. So definitely make sure your bank allows you to make international wire transfers. All right, and once the notario has the first two pieces of paperwork done, the Libertad de Gravamen and Permiso para Adquisición de Inmuebles, which to remind you is the permission to buy property as a foreigner and the official declaration that the property is free of other claims. Once you have those things, you can set a date to sign the contract or the contrato de compraventa. Everything up till this point has been reversible, refundable, and not super official. But at this point, once you sign this contract, you'll have to pay a non-refundable deposit of 10% to the seller. This non-refundable deposit is called the anticipo and if you back out after signing this contract, you don't get your money back. So this is when things get official. Apparently, this contract can be signed remotely via DocuSign, which is good if you want to do it from your home country and not wait around in Mexico. However, the closing, which is when you pay the full purchase price and officially become the new owner, that actually has to be done in person and usually takes place around 30 to 60 days after you sign the contract. So you'll want to factor this into your travel plans. Also, if there's a mortgage involved, you'll also need to have a letter of approval from your lender that officially confirms that you'll have the mortgage ready to help you buy this property. I'll go over financing options in more detail a little bit later on in the video. After you sign the contrato de compraventa, it's pretty much a waiting game after that because the only thing left remaining is for the government to approve your avaluo, which is the confirmation of the assessed property value that you'll have to pay taxes on. So how long that will take really depends on the government. So this part of the timeline is somewhat unpredictable, but really shouldn't take more than a few weeks. All right, and once the government approves your avaluo, it's time for the fifth and almost final step, which is to close on the property and finalize the purchase. Once all the paperwork is ready, you and the seller would meet physically at the notario's office and officially sign the closing papers. This is when you'd wire the rest of the money. Also, if there's a mortgage involved, the bank rep would be present at the closing as well, and they would be wiring their portion of the purchase price or the mortgage. Now, in addition to the purchase price of the property, you also need to pay closing costs. I already mentioned the notario's fee of around 3% of the purchase price, but you'll also have to pay the ESI tax, which stands for Impuesto Sobre Adquisiciones de Inmuebles. That means the tax on the acquisition of real estate. That varies from around 3 to 4%. So combined, you can consider about 7% added to the purchase price for all-in closing costs. It's kind of a lot. Um, I think 3 to 2% is a little more usual in the United States. So that was one part that sort of surprised me, but it's something you have to be ready to pay as well. So for example, if you're buying a property for say 10 million pesos, you should be ready to pay 10.7 million pesos to cover closing costs. Another thing to consider is what the currency exchange rate is going to be at the time of the closing. So at the time of this video, the dollar Mexican peso exchange rate has been pretty stable around 20 pesos per dollar. So that's what I'm counting on to do my calculations. But it's crazy how much the exchange rate will affect your purchase price in dollars. For example, back earlier this year, when the rate briefly went to 25 pesos per dollar, 10 million pesos would be $400,000. But now with the rate at 20 pesos, it becomes $500,000. After you pay for and close on the property, there is a final, final, final step, step number six, which is to make sure the purchase gets recorded in the public registry or the registro público. This officially announces you to the public as the new owner of the property and adds one more layer of legitimacy to the transaction. So your notario is in charge of making sure this happens and it's always a good idea to get a written copy. Now, if you want to get a mortgage, it's a little bit trickier for foreigners, but definitely doable. After looking into various options, I actually decided to do an all cash purchase in the end. But if you wanted to borrow money, here are the options that you have. First, you can apply for residency, which is actually really easy if you have an immigration lawyer. And then you get a mortgage from a Mexican bank, just like a Mexican local. Rates at the time of this video range anywhere from 8 to 11%. It's definitely high compared to the States, 
But then again, a savings account in pesos here pays a lot more as well, around 6%. So the interest rate environment is just totally different here. If you don't want to get residency or it'll just take too long, you can also get a mortgage from a fintech company. Now, fintech companies are a little more willing to go outside the box than traditional banks. So with this one, you don't need to have residency. The one that I was looking into is called Smart Lending. I'll link to them below. And apparently they would have given me a loan at 9.8% something I did look into but didn't end up going with. All right, and now a quick chat about real estate prices in Mexico City. Just like in any other city, prices vary a lot by neighborhood. So the most expensive neighborhoods in Mexico City are Roma, Polanco, and Condesa. Prices in these areas for, say, a two-bedroom apartment are gonna run you anywhere from five to 10 million pesos, which at an exchange rate of 20 pesos means around 250 to $500,000. Now, with 10 million pesos, which is the higher end of that range, it's gonna get you literally anything you want. The best location, doorman, private terrace, brand new construction, etc. And this is in the capital of Mexico. So I would say compared to the States at least, it's not too bad. Other neighborhoods that are considered cool, safe, and desirable, but are way cheaper than the neighborhoods that I mentioned are Juarez, Escandon, San Miguel de Chapultepec, Coyoacan, and Narvarte. In these areas, you can find really awesome apartments for three to five million pesos, which works out to around 150,000 to $250,000. So much, much cheaper. Now there's also something called preventa, which means pre-sale in Spanish. This is very common here, and it means buying a unit before construction has finished. You'll basically just go off renderings and floor plans, and you'll pay in installments until the building is finished. You actually get huge discounts, sometimes as much as 50% for buying apartments in Preventa, and you can even buy them two to three years out in advance. And that is another way to get a place for even cheaper. As for places to do some research on prices, although I don't recommend working with their brokers, lahouse.mx is a great website for getting an idea of neighborhoods and prices. It's kind of like a Zillow, and it's a really great place to find apartments in Preventa as well. Listen, I understand being able to buy in a country where your dollars go a long way is a position of huge privilege. I feel very lucky to have found a city that I love so much where I can afford to buy property without taking on a bunch of debt. Now, if you decide to move abroad, it's important to think of ways to give back to the local economy, hiring local people for things, buying local instead of ordering on Amazon, etc. I think that if you're mindful, it can be a win-win for everybody involved. There's a lot of crazy things happening in the world right now. Inflation is probably going to get much worse and stick around for a while. And obviously the stock market and cryptocurrency markets are getting crushed. And in times like these, you have to get creative, not only to budget and save money, but also to find other ways of achieving financial milestones, like becoming a homeowner. Looking beyond your own country is one way to do this. Speaking of inflation, that's what I'll be talking about in next week's video. We are on the cusp of a huge, huge paradigm shift in the economy and in the world, and I want to break it down for you. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. All right, well, that is it for today, guys. I don't want to jinx anything, but if all goes well, I should be closing on my new apartment in just a few weeks. And I really hope to be giving you guys a new home tour soon. And for those of you who want to one day buy property abroad, I hope this video has helped you and inspired you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.